really think about it, and I always forget about it, so it doesn't super affect that. It's kind of took me away from like showing it to people. Yeah. Yeah. There are, so whenever I go back and I look at news stuff, um, I sometimes have like a shock because, oh, and I know why they did it because news started as like, it wasn't even, it was a project and they were like, can we get this off the ground? So I know why they did it, but a lot of those like magazine pictures of them in just their underwear as like 12 year olds, I was like, um, okay, well, um, <laughs> it's very, like it's shocking now because you can't, um, I cannot imagine them throwing, I mean, they did it for Rena, poor girl, but um, it's like poor Rena in a virgin killer sweat. I was like, okay, yeah, she's, she's okay, well, whatever. But, but a lot of the new stuff I think was, they kind of had to rely on that the sex appeal of anime, I think, to really draw people in and be like, ooh, look at this. But now looking back, it's it can be very shocking when you look at it because you're like, yes, what? Like, and, and then, but you sit there and you go, but they kind of had to because sex sells, and that's a big part of anime. Oh, um, even though it's very unfortunate um, that they had to do it for these yeah. little girls. Um, but yeah, so it's it's kind of, that's one of those shocking things that I'm like, if you find this picture, don't pay any attention. Like, yeah. it's just, and I know, and like they kind of didn't do any of that for Aqua, um, but then they did a, a Genki, a Genki G magazine that came out, like Rena, that just, you could vote for like, who, who wants an illustration? And I know it got like, I know at least here, or at least the circles I was reading, people were like, yikes, they put Rena in a virgin killer sweater mm -hmm. in a classroom. Okay, and like I remember Evan was like, we don't want this, please, um, which is, which was kind of, so I, I hope they don't really do that in the future, because mm -hmm. I feel like they don't, they don't need that anymore, right. but it is one of those things where like looking back, you're like, oh wow, they had to do that because they just had to get like attention and stuff so that it could be a popular Yeah, it thing. kind of does date the anime, now that like, I look at like how it was like 2000 something or another, right? And I guess it's interesting now, looking at where Aqua's kind of going, I remember like there was, this was a while ago, I think a year or two ago, there was like just one picture of Shika where there was like more Yes, that was, I show. That was so such a oh, yeah. 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 Do you remember this? The positioning of her skirt or whatever what it was, was, was done in an overtly suggestive way. Yeah, mm -hmm. there, there are still, I think, some suggestive pictures yeah. of some of the Aqua girls, that. specifically like Pranan and Yo, and they're like, I swim, and I'm like, mm, I don't think <laughs> that's what we're all, okay, well, you know, <laughs> like, yeah, 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 so it's like, well, kind of, but then they kind of get away with it, because they're like, no, she just likes to swim in the ocean mm -hmm. in the pool, and well, they're like, mm -hmm. One thing that's interesting is I've seen in, um, I think people are even commenting, yeah, on the new lives that just came out for Guilty Kiss and shout on. I think at least in Gilded Kiss it was doing this way. Like normally a lot of times with like the live outfits, they like have make sure it's midriff covered. But I think it was with Gilded Kiss that they started to, and maybe actually it was um, the Six Live, was it the New Year's one? No, I can't remember. It was the one with Pirate's Desire, that's all I'm remembering. They like, it's a little bit more midriff showing and it's more actualized to the art, which is an interesting move. I, in, it's not quite like sexualized, but like it's interesting that like they're moving forward to be more accurate with the images, if that makes sense. Which I'm not against, but I'm like, I don't know if that it's going, yeah. it could be, be seen as going more towards the sexualized area. I think they did the same thing in the third live for Nihi Kasaki. They, especially for Kanata, because she has that really beautiful like outfit that's like a crop top and then short and then her pants. Um, they kind of, they kept it accurate while also, I think, keeping it modest enough so that the actresses themselves feel um, comfortable still. They'll, I, what I've noticed is when they do like have midriff or a little bit of midriff showing, they'll try to still make the uh, like the pants a little more high waisted, so like they the, they go up maybe to their belly button or something, so that it's a little more, even though it's still accurate, and then but they can still feel like they are covered up and not like being ogled or gonna you know, fall and have things fall out of their costumes. Um, so yeah, I think it's an interesting thing the way they, I love watching the lives just to see how they do and modify mm -hmm. those artworks to make them, one, I mean, you can just dance in them, period, because there are some outfits you're like, there's no way, like there's no way you dance in that, like that's impossible, <laughs> you just, that's a lie. Um, but then they managed to do it, and you're like, I don't know what sorcery you are, but you work. Um, 
So yeah, so I think it's really interesting to watch them kind of try to keep things uh, accurate and also make sure the actresses feel comfortable in what they're wearing on stage. Yeah. I agree, but I've also wondered how are they not sweat so hard, but also I think I was talking to someone in vendors, Abigail, and she was saying that she was really close up once and they are sweating. <laughs> you just can't tell them very far. They're very good at smiling and not showing that they're, it's difficult. <laughs> So um uh, um uh, so I'm gonna know right I'm the marketing or I am the head of events here in Nina and I've been DJing for actually surprisingly since 2017. It's funny because I started DJing to hip hop before I actually crossed over to Anxiety. So, yeah. So when I had my start, I just did something I was more interested in, right? But I always knew I was in dance. So I decided to kind of cross it over, and it kind of helped with it. So. Why don't we start as a Amazon DJ, right? Thank you very much. <laughs> For any DJ in particular, it's all about finding out, first of all, what music you like, what kind of genre you want to start off with, right? And then kind of thinking about, too, like, thinking about, too, like, what? <coughs> then you go into the next step of what can I do to kind of get in there, right? Because how many of us here love music? I, I want to see a lot of hands because it wouldn't be this uh, I don't this about the music, right? Yeah. So did it I, I have a question. Did did it does there did it anyone ever make a playlist on Spotify or anything like that? Yeah? And how was that? How was the experience like making the playlist? I wanna ask you guys this. Uh, for me it was mostly just um, starting off by Throwing every like vocal like rock song that I mm -hmm. enjoyed listening to. Okay. Eventually, after a while, I tried to kind of curate it, make it like more of a shorter best of list, and eventually ended up uh, also putting a lot of care and attention for some reason because it was a list to a lot about the order that it was in to try to lead into songs that are to not have like a massive jumps from something that's like slower tempo to something to a high pace or something like that. You raise a very good point, because when we make a playlist, right, sometimes we pay attention to how the tone is, right, and this is very important for DJs, uh, to tone, the theme, and also even the speed of the song, right, and sometimes we make a playlist that makes sense. Anyone else wants to kind of uh, share their experience of making a playlist on anything? Yes? I used to get a song that I wanted to listen to. <laughs> And that's valid as well, too, which is, I guess, the essential of what I made with my sets. So I'm going to talk about, then, some of the basic skills you may need for the DJ. I have a very dumb question to ask. Who here can count up to eight? Raise up your hand. Four. Okay, 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 what about four? Okay, so when we have DJ, right? It all starts off with counting the beats, right? Um, uh, who, who did that? Who dances? Whoever did, did puzzle plan? Yes. So, so I'm gonna put you on a spot here. When we dance, right? When we dance, you notice we have to kind of keep uh, keep uh, attention to the beats. Yeah. Yes. And when dancing, it's mostly in an eight beat, right? So it's the same thing with DJ, and it's the same thing with the, a lot of the music thing, right? Except, the DJing is not, not as complex as any other music form. It's basically, if you can count up to uh, four or eight beats, right, you're, you, you, you've got a good start. So we're going to do an example here, okay? We're going to be counting beats, me and uh, all you guys. And we're going to be doing it to a little bit of a simple stick song. I'll do this one. We're going to count beats to a nice circulation. Now, when we listen to this, I want you guys to be conscious of how much count there are, right? And I'll start counting with you guys, but then uh, once uh, once we, we continue, then uh, I'm going to let you guys count in your head, right? <laughs>
song, if you're having trouble counting, do it count off to you. And I'm just going to play the intro for this. It's a Leopard Eye by a Trigger. From uh, way of the So in each of those counts, and notice how I scratched during when I circulation, right? In each of those counts, it's important to kind of pay attention because those will decide when you drop your transitions, when you do your effects, and when you do your scratches. Just like dancing, right? Because uh, in, in, in your mind, right? And some DJs teach a four count, and that's mostly for EDO. I like to do an eight count because of the fact that I spend more anis anisong, right? So uh, basically, I, have, I follow more of a pop, uh, pop uh, pattern when I uh, DJ, right? So uh, yeah. <laughs> Any questions about the count so far? Does it all make sense? OK, cool. So yeah. So basically, I, when I uh, DJ, I split up the counts to eight, right? And then afterwards, uh, I try to think about okay, what, what should I do with them each count, right? And those will predict. Are you turning on? That's nice. What can you do? <laughs> and all that fun stuff. All right. Maybe some Oh, let's see okay. here. Now, I'm gonna go. Uh, <coughs> I'm gonna go and show you guys something simple. All right. <coughs> uh, I'm gonna do this. Now, <coughs> song structure is important. When we, uh, now I'm going to go into song structure, right? Now all you guys know about eight counts. When we uh, DJ, right, it's all about the song structure. And each genre has a different song structure. Um, as you can tell from a lot of the EDM songs, they have, most of the song structures go in a four by four by four. If you guys know your new music theory. But uh, basic any song, right? It goes follows along with the like intro, verse, bridge, chorus, and all that fun stuff, right? So uh, uh, when when we use the the eight count, it lets us keep track of where we are at in terms of the song structure, and uh, and you know what? If we keep track of that, then we know when to transition, and we know when to use our effects, right? Typically, when I uh, DJ mostly at uh, any song, I like to just keep it from uh, transitioning from the intro all the way to the end of the chorus, right? But sometimes you have to do a bit of funny stuff. Um, uh, I'm gonna do something. I'm gonna do a transition that I did during uh, during uh, the the rave last night or the concert last night, and it's one of the it's one of the things that I've uh, done for a very long time. Okay. So I'm going to play this part of Lumatory, and I'm going to show you an example of uh, paying attention to the, to the song structure, right? <laughs>